Mr. Baji likes snails. You can see this piece here. Shiny. Perfect. Not all species of land snails are edible. Helix pomatia is most often eaten. Conu aspersa is also eaten, as is Helix corum. Pilipolita, aka apple snails. They're also consumed in Asia and North America. Land snails have been eaten since prehistoric times. Shells have been found by archaeologists all over the world, indicating that many varieties of snails have been a staple diet throughout the ages. The edible species of Talalactea have been recovered from the Roman era city of Alubulis in present day Morocco. In many cultures, snails are considered as an elite food. Like most mollusks, Land snails are high in protein and low in fat content. So the land snails are estimated to contain 15% protein, 2.4% fat, and about 80% water. You need to purge their digestive system before you eat them. Part of that process is feeding the snails a diet of oatmeal, and then reducing that diet over several days before they're consumed. And just like the shrimp and burgers, they can be sautéed they can be fried, they can be boiled, and they can be heated up and cooked in the shell. And that's what's on the menu today. Trying to find them is murder, they just blend in. Ah, there you go. Yeah. The weather's about to change guys, so I need to put up a ridge line in a speedy fashion. So what I'm going to do is, the bowline knot, which is the very end of the ridge line, I'm going to wrap that round the tree, bring it round like so, then I'm going to feed the working end through, Give that a bit of a twist, then I can tighten it. And then that's one end of the ridge line secured. 
There you go. I've got three prussic nuts. So I'll pull them over to this side and show you how I put a prussic knot together. So what I'm going to do is this the top of the the loop that I've made, I'm going to put that across the ridge line and where the knot is, I'm going to put that through, wrap it round once, then again, twice, then again, three times. Always dressing or being mindful to dress the knot. Nicely dressed, nicely dressed, so when you pull it, you add tension, it stays where it is, and you add more tension, it stays where it is. If it's like this, then what you find is, when you pull it, it will pull, you know, you don't want it to do that. So as you can see, we've dressed the toggle. So it's not gonna, there's no sharp ends on it. So it's not gonna cause damage to uh, any of the gear. So we're gonna make a loop like so. Come through the loop with the, in this case, the working end. Through the loop. Then we're gonna go round The other end and through the little uh, loop. There we have it. That's your bowline knot. You can go through. There you go. Nice and tidy. Get some shavings in there first. From the ferro rod. You can. Get a nice build up. And then start to give it some. There you go. So we have flame on. That's with a tiny bit of uh, a tiny bit of resin. Now it's started to catch. I can start to plow it all on now. So once this is burnt down now to uh, coals, then we can stick the snails on and uh, chow down. Right. 
guys, I want to talk about a new knife I've purchased recently, uh, made in the USA. It's called the K-Bar neck knife. The blade itself is about uh, an inch and a half, like a concave actually, concave sort of uh, blade. And has a, a rubber handle and comes with this leather sheath with like a, a belt loop there, which really doesn't serve the purpose. It's a bit cumbersome, it's a bit in the way. It's a drop point, drops down, very sharp. 90 degree spine about three mil it's a full tang knife but it's very handy and for me it's an absolute perfect size unlike the cold steel neck knife that i've got which is quite long this is a bit more compact it's got a beautiful leather sheath with a nice brass uh, press stud there comes with this lanyard which I'm going to take off because it's just too long and cumbersome. It can fit four fingers and I've got fairly big hands, four fingers around it to do your cutting and uh, this would definitely be good for gutting and skinning uh, a rabbit and small game but yeah it's uh, this is a beautiful little knife. K-Bar made in the USA don't know how much of that was in focus. Um, the next one, they have seen this one before. This is the Tarava Puko. It's got a button press there, a leather case. Very, very, very sharp. Tempted not to even touch that. That's, um, I've done a video on this. It comes with a rubber handle and an o-ring at the end there, it's a full tang knife. This one is uh, the, there's a 110 and 140. So this is the long one. And uh, it's got a rubber handle, four mil uh, spine and a beautiful leather case. Press stud there so it doesn't fall out. I'm gonna sort this fire out guys. Drop point. So a little ridge there. You can also grab the knife just around there for skinning small game and so forth. The sheath that it comes in isn't is pretty poor, and I'm not sure whether this is the right sheath actually for the uh, the field master. If I'm honest with you, this it can easily. Can easily fall out. I mean, I know you're not supposed to have knives upside down, but this could easily fall out at any time. So, it's got like a black oak handle, full tang knife. You've got a your brass o ring there for your lanyard, and uh, yeah, there's another knife that I've got to my collection. I've got about 17 knives now. And uh, we're going to try and test this one out over the next few months and see see what it's like. But yeah, I'm not impressed by the sheath. You know, you might as well. I don't even know why there is this uh, press stud there. Probably just for decoration, but that easily comes out. So that's the fuel master guys. So here's our collection of snails. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, with the shell side up, I'm just going to lay them in the ashes. Next to the fire. And that fire is hot. Oh yeah, yeah. Very hot. We'll see how these work out.
Well, we've lost your fire, guys. There's a fair bit of heat coming off the fire there. As you can see, some of them are starting to bubble away. That one's leaking a little bit. There is a strong smell of garlic in the air. Now the difficult thing is, he's eating these out of the shell, so I'm going to have to make myself a little wooden implement. As you can see, they're bubbling away. I'm going to have to somehow make some sort of implement to get them out. Some sort of hook, maybe. Well, that's what we're looking at that type of thing to hook them in. Move these to the one side to let the ones that have cooked cool down. Soup on as well. Minestrone soup, I think. Just stick that on there whilst the coals are uh, nice and hot. Right guys, should we get into some of these or what? Do you want to come and join me? Right, let's see if I'm in focus guys, before we get into this baby, as you can see. Uno snail or I'm gonna tell you now. Let's show you. I'm gonna tell you how these taste. There you go. Still in shot. Mm. Very garlicky. Not too chewy, a little bit like um, a very soft limpet. Uh, not too bad. Let's try out a few more, eh? Badgy, do you want to try one? Do you want to try one, Badge? Check this baby. Voila. 
Oh, this is a big juicy one. Big juicy baby. Big juicy baby. Mmm. First um, impressions. Uh, well, you get a bit of a gag refle reflex. But um, the aftertaste is nice. That's all I can say. Nice gallicky aftertaste. Let's chow down for a few more before we start on the minestrone soup. There you go. Let's bang the lid on that. Nice and tidy. Have some more snails. The implements worked out nice. Go back. See if Badgie eats them. Yeah, Badge. Yeah. Uh -huh. Badgie's turning the nose up. Come on, Badge. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. She's not having it. She sniffed it now though. Come on, come here. Come the way, girl. I've got something else for you. Come. Go on, go on, some didn't. Come around here. Come on. There you go, much. Sorry. Better minestrone soup. Getting a bit of kickback, a bit of kickback. Let's double up on the minestrone soup. Amazing! Right, okay. That one can go there. Like that. It's certainly edible with the garlic and that, you know, it does give them a different type of taste. It's got to go. This is just got to go on. But anyone excav excavating this area, maybe. In a few years to come, we'll just think caveman, cavemen were here eating snails. How decadent were the cavemen? Ah, yes. Turn it up to gas mark six. Oh, look at that, nice and glowing. Now that's not too shabby. 
Let me just lower you down here for a wee second. Something a bit more standard for the palate, eh? That's it, minestrone soup. There you go, guys. Get the thing out. 